Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah. Uh, praise be to Allah because today we, we are able to meet in the first uh, class of um, advanced research methodology for PhD students. Welcome, Bapa uh, Adi and uh, Brother Sonko. And uh, we are still waiting for the others to join us. So let's uh, let's uh, talk about the uh, teaching plan. We will discuss uh, about what uh, this class will uh, tentatively cover. Uh, and before that, um, I would like to remind everybody to register for this class. Yeah, you need to register as a student and also register for the class. MFQ 8113, Advanced Research Methodology. Uh, probably due to uh, technical uh, technical problems uh, none of your names appear in the in the uh, students list huh? so maybe due to technical problem uh, but uh, still I would like to remind everybody to register for this class I already registered, uh, Prof. Okay. Maybe due to technical uh, reason. Yeah. The name that, uh, does not appear yet. But in my uh, portal, is already, they said already registered. Okay. Good, good. Yeah. Inshallah, your name will appear soon. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, last week, your name appear as the first student who registered. But today, for some reasons, <laughs> it uh, does not it's appear. Gone. So maybe, maybe <laughs> some technical reasons. It's all right. It's all right. So last week, uh, on the 24th of February, yeah, yeah. I checked, and your name is there. Priyat yes. And Sahih. Yeah. Saifuddin and uh, Sonko. So there are three names who have uh, registered. Do you know uh, Mr. Saifuddin? Uh, actually, I didn't know the, the person, but uh, I was in one group of uh, Intake 2023 and also uh, the IBF uh, WhatsApp group. Mm. I think it's Malaysian. No, I see. Huh? Maybe. Yeah, because the number uh, number phone number is plus sixty. Okay. So my name is not appear, and how about my brother Sonko? Is also yes, appear or? Today, okay. Today, there is all the names disappear today. Oh, okay. Maybe due to some technical reasons. It's all right. Yeah. Yes. I will check again. Okay. So, okay, let's talk about this class. This is the Advanced Research Methodology, MFQ 8113. Uh, this is a prerequisite class for PhD candidates. So uh, the requirement is all PhD candidates must pass this class. Uh, it doesn't matter what grade, as long as the grade is above B minus, B minus or above. B minus is 60. Uh, 
I'm not sure. I think so. I think yeah, I. Well, what about four? You told me. Yeah, I think so yes. Yeah, he said you have to be passed by over the sixty. Yeah, I think so. Yes. So this course or this class address the theoretical concepts of uh, uh, research methods. This course introduces students to the fundamental of preparing the research and presenting the written and oral presentation. Uh, so in this class, we will learn the theoretical concepts of research. And then uh, I will try to guide you to apply those concepts to the uh, preparation of your thesis, right? So, uh, sorry, uh, can I take the phone? Sorry about that. So in this class, we will learn not only the theory, but also the practice of how we use the, uh, the concepts of research uh, and uh, how we apply to the actual writing of our thesis. Uh, as you know, for PhD, after, after you pass this class, you will have to present at four different stages, right? The first stage is called Colloquium 1, where the PhD candidates is, the, the PhD candidates are required to present at Colloquium 1, where they present the initial plan of the research. And in stage two, Proposal defense, PhD candidates are required to defend orally also. Chapter one, chapter two, and chapter three uh, of the, uh, the actual thesis. And uh, in uh, Colloquium two, in stage three, PhD candidates are required to present um, all of the writings from chapter one to chapter five, right? So that's colloquium two. And the last stage, and the most important is the the viva, the viva. So in the viva, the students are required to present all their work and will be examined by two examiners, one internal examiner and two external. And the first one is internal examiner and the second one is the 
external examiner. So, uh, sorry, for sorry, for yes, Coll colloquium two is proposal depend. It's one, two, three, chapter one, two, three. Uh, proposal defense is chapter one, two, three, and colloquium two is all the chapters. Colloquium one, initial proposal. Yes, correct. Initial proposal. Colloquium one, initial proposal. Uh, proposal defense chapter one, two, three, up until the methodology. And uh, colloquium two, all the chapters. And why? So all the chapters. So means initial proposal is a chapter one to three. No, initial proposal doesn't have any chapters. Okay. Just, just uh, the students are required to present the 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 title that they plan to do and then uh, problem statement uh, research questions uh, research objectives um, uh, scope of the study a little bit about the uh, literature review and a little bit about the research method. No mm -hmm. chapters. No chapters. No chapters. Okay. Just all those subtopics should be there. So it should it should consist of the title, right? Yeah. And then probably a little bit about the background of the study, problem statement research questions, uh, research objectives, scope of the study, a little bit about uh, literature review, and a little bit about the um, uh, research method. Yeah? yeah. Whether you want to use uh, quantitative or qualitative um, research what's what's your plan on uh, how to collect data how to analyze the data yeah no chapters ahlan wa sahlan encik saifuddin apa khabar alhamdulillah thank you doctor thank you prof most welcome ahlan um okay we just started uh, discussing about the teaching plan for this class. And perhaps uh, because we have a new PhD candidate here, Mr. Saifuddin, perhaps uh, we can uh, introduce ourselves, Ta'aruf session. Uh, we, we, have, we take a little bit of time. Okay. We take okay. some little time to introduce ourselves. Okay, uh, my name is uh, Yusuf Haji Osman. I'm the director for the Center for Islamic Finance Education and Research. Um, so, PhD students call me Prof. Yusuf. Master student call me Dr. Yusuf. Uh, undergraduate students call me Sir Yusuf. <laughs> and my neighbors uh, call me Pachi. <laughs> so if I become your neighbor and I call you Pachi, eh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. and you become a neighbor, you... yeah, right. <laughs> okay, uh, I've been a lecturer since 1992. Uh, so all my life, I dedicate myself to learning and teaching. I have done nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> learning and then teaching. So uh, I have uh, one wife and uh, five children. Um, I live in Kuala Ketil, near 
Yunishan. Uh, I'm from Kedah, local uh, local here. Uh, my background, I studied economics at a uh, 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 degree and also at master's. I graduated from uh, University of Wisconsin in the United States. And then for PhD, um, I, I received, uh, alhamdulillah, PhD in Islamic finance from Unishams. <laughs> okay, so that's a little bit about myself. Now let's uh, let's uh, uh, maybe uh, Mr. Safudin. Okay, okay. Assalamualaikum, everyone. Uh, my name is Saifuddin, Saifuddin Sulaiman. Uh, age. Uh, I'm glad. I'm glad to be uh, fifth series this year, fifty. <laughs> okay, we are, we are the same series, huh? <laughs> okay. Uh, actually, currently I'm attached with the Koperasi Sahabat Amanah Itia Malaysia. I started uh, working with the Keuangan Bersatu since uh, far behind 1996. Then I'm, I joined May Bank and after that uh, Hong Leong Bank. And then I pursued with the uh, Co-op Bank Pertama for 15 years. And then I'm John Felda. And lastly is a Co-operasi Sahabat. Lah. Yeah. Uh, my education background is uh started from the IPM nineteen nine graduated nineteen ninety five nineteen nineteen ninety five, and then I pursued the degrees and uh masters in UUM MBA. Uh, uh, my my hometown is Pahang, and then I got uh. My my upper uh, my wife family is in Kedah, Alusta, Simpang Kuala. Then uh for sure, uh we pursue my my PhD session this year because of uh I'm attached with Koperasi Sahabat deeply with the Arahanu uh, sectors, yeah, uh, yeah uh even though Arahanu is quite uh, quite boom recently in Malaysia during uh, PKP uh, PKP session. I thought uh, Arahanu can be uh, evaluated in terms of new sectors of uh, transaction business like as banking uh, as we know currently. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Safudin. So, Mr. Safudin has had a um, very diverse uh, background and mm -hmm. very uh, wide and vast experience in industry. Thank so, you, thank you, sir. Thank you, Prof. So, maybe uh, we need your contribution in the discussion because uh -huh. I, I've, been, I've been in the academic uh, area all my life. So, <laughs> less, less exposure to the industry, unfortunately. Uh, for your info, Prof, uh, we are looking forward. Uh, uh, since we have uh, Pa Adi here, <laughs> we are looking forward the uh, Koperasi Sahabat. Nah, we are looking forward to 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 enter the market of Indonesia for Arahnu. Uh, well, then sure, basically, sure. uh, our, I I I. To to uh, to focus of my my study and uh differentiate uh practicing uh arahanu in the uh pegadaian di Indonesia compared to Malaysia. Oh. Uh. Oh. 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 <laughs> Very good. Very good. Yeah. Yeah. Now, uh, Mister Bapa Bapa Adi, silakan. Oh ya, yeah. ya. Yeah, uh, as uh, Cik Saifuddin sudah tahu ya, mungkin uh, 
<laughs> we, we are in one group of uh, Intake 2023 and also uh, IBF, yeah? IBF students. Yeah? So actually, we are my name and completely uh, Adi Priyabno. So, but in in the passport, uh, it's a bit different. ADI become ADY. It's, uh, I have a lot of, uh, <laughs> when I do the, the intake process, so it's a bit, little bit problem. So, but it's solved already. So actually, I joined for uh, UNISAM with all my colleagues in 2022, uh, but uh, because of uh, some uh, uh, certificate and also uh, my name is a little bit different. So just recently, I just uh, joined joined Unison for Intake 2023. So I already met uh, uh, Prof. Yusuf. Prof. Yusuf actually is, is one of my, what do you call it, uh, expert when I doing the the thesis for master degree. So my graduate, uh, bachelor graduate is from uh, civil engineering. So my background is different. Eh? Civil Engineering from Parahyangan University at Bandung. And I joined uh, for Islamic Business Management at Tasky Institute in Bogor uh, for, for master degree and now uh, intake for a PhD uh, program in Unison. <coughs> Hopefully, I will be in Malaysia for visa students process by 20 of May. Uh, and but there is a our college already written back to Indonesia about four G and now we start Firdaus was uh, processing the the student visa at this moment. So I've been working. Actually, I've been working in Malaysia before. Since I was uh, engineer, so I've been working for the project of KLIA one. Wow. 1996 yes. up to 1998. So I was working for actually Malaysian company, but a part of the shareholder is uh, Indonesian. So mm -hmm. after the crisis, I returned back to Indonesia. Mm -hmm. And after that, I joined uh, the developer of uh, industrial estate. So when Pak Fauci said to me, uh, Unisam campus is nearby the uh, industrial estate yeah, or industrial zone. So, wait, what, what's... Okay, go ahead. Oh, 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 sorry. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I joined after that uh, for 20, 22 years already. I have been in the realistic developer so up to now uh, actually i already retired uh, six years ago but the company is not allow me to stop uh, so they are still asking me to join every year so i have been the contract for uh, six years already so just uh, recently they informed me again that i will be continue for another year so uh during my end of the contract is end of May. That's why I can go to Malaysia. <laughs> Otherwise, maybe I have to step down from, from the work to go to Malaysia. Because they will ask me, you have to choose whether you want to work or you want to study. <laughs> some of the some of my boss is asking me, why? You, you already, uh, I have been uh, more than 60 years old. So they're asking me, why are you still study? So I said, Okay. Yeah, this is to to continue uh, well, that my brain can still work. <laughs> so to and uh, one more thing is my reason is uh, you, you cannot stop to learn yeah? because uh, you you have no you are not a perfect human, so your knowledge is all uh, knowledge is always has to be updated, especially. Uh, for me, is uh, ibadah. Yeah. I, I have to 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 study more. Otherwise, I will forgotten uh, how to do ibadah. Yeah. So, 
<laughs> that's to, yeah. That's that's to make my. I mean, I that's mean. to make me wake up. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. That is one one of uh, let's say the big reason for me why I still start. But no one is uh, understand uh, the reason. Yeah. But I said it's okay for you. But I just want to study wherever I still can study, so I will study. Yeah, um, yeah, that's 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 my story. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, thank you. I mean, so uh, why why I come to Uniza? Because of Pak Saiful. Pak Saiful is a friend of Pak Prof. Yusuf. Okay. So he's my supervisor at the master degree. So he always uh, 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 support me. He's always encouraged me. Uh, to come with him to UNISAM. I like UNISAM because the campus is stay in the, uh, uh, what do you call? Uh, because my 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 child um, era and my child uh, moment is I was stay. My father was work in the plantation estate. Plantation estate. So I, I know I feel how how is. Unizam campus already. So because of uh, surrounding is the plantation, if, if I'm not mistaken, yeah? Because what yeah, he said to me... Surrounded by palm plantations. Ah, uh, yeah, palm plantation. So my child is uh, surrounding by, uh, what do you call? I forgot the name. Carrot. Rubber, rubber trees plantation. Okay. And after that, my father was uh, the PIC to opening the palm plantation. So I know how is the atmosphere. I know how is the feeling. Yeah. So it's very nice. But only pa Pauji asking me to take care about the if I go to the if I want to go to the campus by because he, he proposed me to use the bicycle as well. <laughs> <laughs> Even with we start with those, we start with those is using the, the, the car. So he asked me to to stay and to feel how is the situation and atmosphere like during my childhood. But this is good. It's no it's, it's no place to, to to wait yeah for the, the, the times coming. So hopefully I can enjoy and I can do uh, without uh, problem in my office. I think that's from me. Uh, I wouldn't if you want to join later on. I will combine also with my colleagues. Uh, for yeah, and yeah. everybody for the cooperation. Actually, yeah. I also supervising the cooperation. Yeah. But my cooperation is, you, you know, it's a bit different with Malaysia, I think. Mm -hmm. Our cooperation regulation is a little bit yeah, changed and changed. Yeah. So our cooperation actually want to shift it to change to Sharia, to Islamic co cooperation. Mm -hmm. But suddenly, I don't know the reason why they took down the regulation. And uh -huh. now, um, again, uh, we are coming back to conventional uh, cooperation. So, oh. okay, later on we can, yeah, we can discuss. We yeah, can, thank you, thank you, Padi. Thank you. Okay, that's from me, Prof. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Yeah, I'm happy to meet my brothers. Uh, my name is Sonko Muhammad uh, from Uganda. Alhamdulillah, right now I'm in Malaysia, here in Polakitel. Though I normally stay there in Alostar. So initially, I joined in uh, 2022. Uh, though there were some issues which were supposed to be completed and I had to be in Malaysia. Unfortunately, I didn't make it. And uh, Alhamdulillah, this year, I have joined the official uh, Unishams uh, Feb Intake. And I thank Allah. So I'm um, a parent, uh, I'm a father. I'm um, by age 36. I don't know whether I'm young or mature, but I'm 36. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I see my elders. Uh, Alhamdulillah, I'm happy to be with my elders who are going to guide me or shall guide one another. Um, by career, 
I've been teaching for over six years higher institution there in our country, Uganda, and also working with uh, an NGO. I'm a humanitarian on the other side, supporting uh, some people who need help as I do work of teaching, alhamdulillah. So my research is in Takaful, Islamic insurance. Uh, at, um, uh, academic wise, my bachelor, first degree is in business computing. I did it from Islamic University in Uganda. That is an OIC university. Uh, which is Organization of Islamic Co Cooperation. Then my master's degree, I did it in financial management uh, from India, Amita University. Then here now, I'm doing my PhD in Islamic Banking and Finance, where my research is in Takaful or Islamic Insurance. I ask Allah, be sufficient for us all. I mean, I mean so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have a diverse uh, background. Eh? First degree in Uganda. Alhamdulillah. India. So you are a global figure. <laughs> Not as <just> such. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Thank you, everyone, for the introduction. So, Alhamdulillah, I get to know uh, each and every one of you are better. And inshallah, we will continue to get to know each other uh, along along the way, inshallah. 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 <laughs> and along the way, also, uh, we will learn. Uh, the, the theory or the concepts of research and at the same time uh, we will use that knowledge about uh, research in order to write uh, each of the chapters that are required in the uh, in the thesis uh, writing of your of your PhD so for your PhD usually we have um, Five basic chapters, yeah. Chapter one, introduction, chapter two, literature review, chapter three, uh, research findings, chapter four, uh, uh, sorry, uh, let me repeat chapter one, introduction, chapter two, literature review, <coughs> chapter three, research method, chapter four, research findings, chapter five, discussion, uh, recommendations, and uh, conclusions. So those are the five basic chapters. So we, we target uh, that by the end of this class, you'll be able to write at least chapter one, chapter two, and chapter three. Insha'Allah. So in this class, uh, we will study about the basic step of a research process, a data collection methods, uh, research uh, methodologies, uh, data analysis, findings, discussion, and and uh, report writing. How how we are going to write the PhD thesis in the in the correct and um, in the correct uh, a, a format of uh, academic writing. So in this class, uh, we have uh, three objectives. Number one, um, uh, the objective of this class is to explain various um, epistemology, uh, relates to research for example uh, what what is a research what is uh, social science research uh, the difference between pure and uh, applied research 
uh, the use of theories in uh, research. So those kind of things. And then uh, we will try to expose the PhD students to the various uh, statistical techniques. Uh, if you decide to use quantitative, uh, so there are various techniques in quantitative research. And also, uh, there are several research designs in qualitative uh, research uh, that uh, the student can, can choose. So whether you choose uh, quantitative or qualitative uh, research, Inshallah, this yeah. this class will uh, give uh, a basic understanding about those uh, techniques yeah, in doing the research. Some students might want to consider using mixed method. So whether you use um, quantitative or qualitative or mixed method, uh, you need to take into account the uh, manageability. Uh, don't do something that is not uh, manageable. Eh? So because your objective is to finish uh, these uh, studies. So any questions uh, regarding the, uh, the, the uh, approach of research, whether <clears throat> quantitative or qualitative, uh, you can consult me or you can consult uh, your supervisors. Your supervisors will be uh, will be uh, appointed soon after you uh, finished uh, writing the um, what we call the research, the initial plan. Yeah. The initial plan should be between five to 10 pages, uh, which contains the basics of uh, the basic uh, subtopics of what you plan to do. So in the uh, initial plan, uh, you should write about your topic and then probably overview or background of the uh, topic, and then a problem statement, uh, research uh, questions, uh, research objectives, a uh, little bit about literature review, and a little bit about the research method. I will give you in writing uh, about what to write in the initial plan. Eh? And then last, uh, this class uh, aims to help the students to prepare research output in the form of research report. So at UNISHAMS, we have <coughs> a, like this is a template no? that you can follow uh, in terms of formatting uh, the, the font size and font style. So uh, you should follow the <clears throat> the template and you can, I think you can download the template from your portal. Prof, Prof. Yes, yes, go ahead. Uh, the initial plan and template of uh, or our thesis, can I put in the Bahasa or this is uh, on Bahasa or in English? Uh, yeah, Bahasa, uh, there are two options. Mm -hmm. So the writing can be in Bahasa Malaysia uh, and, uh, or English. Yeah. Okay, okay, understood. So don't worry. Uh, you can write in Bahasa Malaysia or in English. So Mr. Sonko will write in English. Yeah, <laughs> okay. He is still learning Bahasa. Not yet. Not yet. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Muhammad can came to Kuala Lumpur now. I can teach it. Bahasa. Inshallah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is the minimal fee? Inshallah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
All right, for, for the class, uh, you don't have to worry about the grade. So, um, nobody has uh, failed this class, uh, provided that they, um, uh, you know, uh, send or submit the assignments and, and uh, take the final exam. So I'm not really worried about that. Uh, the most important, uh, the important thing about this class is, uh, besides passing the class, is uh, to be able to learn the, the basic concepts about research method and apply it to your to your uh, thesis writing. So I think that's that's the most important. There is no point of knowing the research if if we cannot apply it in in our writing. Just like there is no point of us having a driving license uh, if we don't know how, if we don't drive the car. <laughs> okay, okay, understood. Okay. So, because uh, previously, you know, before 2014, I found that some of the PhD students before 2014, they um, had trouble to write, although they passed the research methodology class, because uh, at that time, the, the lecturer focused on the theoretical aspects of the research uh, methodology. But uh, since 2014, we tried the approach. So the class is not only about the theory, but more importantly, how we uh, apply the theory to the actual writing. So I will guide you from time to time. So my advice is uh, for next week, uh, everybody try to write um, at least a topic. Uh, and better still, if you can write uh, a simple initial plan. Yeah, I know Mr. Sonko has uh, finished writing the initial plan. Uh, but for ID also, I think you have finished. You have. Uh, I, I changed a little bit. Okay. Uh, before I want to do by qualitative, now change uh, by quantitative. Okay, so you you like quantitative, huh? <laughs> uh, because I I I read your 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 paper your thesis, uh, so I already write <laughs> slowly. So you, you uh, like I your, you like my thesis? Yes. <laughs> Maybe you like me also. <laughs> <laughs> like you as a teacher. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> so so that, that's one way to to get me as your supervisor. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> so Cik Parudin uh, waiting for me for to send the initial plan. So I still typing. Okay. So uh, so next week try to submit uh, whatever yeah. that you have so that we can discuss. Yes. Cik so, Parudin. Uh, uh, also can can try to jot down something uh, yeah. related to your topic. Boleh tulis dalam bahasa Melayu. Uh, tajuk, kemudian uh, apa ni? Latar belakang kajian, kemudian uh, penyataan masalah, uh, kemudian uh, persoalan kajian, uh, kemudian objektif kajian, kemudian uh, skop kajian, uh, kemudian uh, sedikit berkaitan dengan kajian yang le lepas yang telah dijalankan berkaitan dengan tajuk dan sedikit tentang kaedah penyelidikan sama ada uh, nak buat berbentuk uh, kuantitatif ataupun kualitatif jadi nanti kita akan uh, saya akan guide dari semasa ke semasa baik prof Baik, terima kasih. Uh, kemudian, uh, like, like I said, uh, don't worry too much about passing the grade. Just uh, follow along the class. 
and nobody sh should fail. Nobody has failed. So I mean, I mean, inshallah. I've been teaching this class since <clears throat> 2016. Mm. So nobody has failed yet. So either the students mm -hmm. are good or I am a good lecturer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think you are the good lecturer. <laughs> or, or both. <laughs> yeah. uh, actually, everyone understood. <laughs> actually, um, some uh, some students at undergraduate level they have never studied. I've never taught my undergraduate students because I've been involved with our PhD and master's students. So one one of the undergraduate students came and um, see me, two of them, and said, uh, Prof, uh, uh, you have never taught us in undergraduate class. So now we want to pursue a, a master's level. And uh, one of the reasons is we want to study um, and be in your class. And then I, I asked them, what do they say about me? They said, and then the, the girl said, oh, they, they told me that you are a good lecturer. And then I said, oh, that, that is a lie. <laughs> <laughs> that is not true. I think I'm not really a good lecturer. But um, I think my advantage is um, if you ask me questions, uh, then suddenly I'm a good lecturer. If you don't ask any questions, I think I'm a boring lecturer. <laughs> so I think that because perhaps because of the experience, yeah? so because I've been teaching research method at undergraduate level since 1993. 1993 at undergraduate level, uh, 2000, uh, 13 or 2012, I, I don't remember, at master's level uh, and 2016 at PhD level. So, so I'm not a good lecturer. If you don't ask me questions, I'm a very boring person. <laughs> so so that, that's what I told the students. Alhamdulillah, two of them just, um, just uh, registered for, for master's. Alhamdulillah, we have more than uh, 40 PhD students. Uh, we have the highest number of PhD students at Unishams, and more than uh, 40 students also at master's level. So the highest number of uh, master's students also. So we, we, are, we are trying the best uh, academically to help students pass the class pass the class and also more importantly pass the the thesis yeah so inshallah so these are some of the things that we will learn uh, the research strategies uh, research design planning um, the research project yeah uh, how, how do we have how do we write the initial plan uh, how to formulate research questions and then we will talk about the qualitative research, some of the research designs in qualitative research, and then the data analysis in qualitative research. Then we switch gear and we, fo uh, we focus on uh, quantitative research, the process of doing the quantitative research, the uh, the, the, the construction of theoretical framework in the quantitative research, validity and reliability of um, the items or the questions in the questionnaire. And then after that, we want to distribute the questionnaire. We need to decide the population of the study and then the sampling of the study. And then uh, how after that, after we get the data, how we input the data in the software, and then how we analyze the data and get the findings. 
and test about the goodness of the data. And uh, of course, the statistical significance of the relationships between the variables. Uh, if you are still confused at this uh, stage, it's, it's all right. You are supposed to be confused. <laughs> <laughs> Later on, inshallah, we go uh, slowly uh, at your pace. I will, Usually, I don't teach at my pace. Eh? Usually, I teach at the student's pace, at the student's speed. Because uh, my my speed is very slow. <laughs> okay. So, any questions about the teaching plan? Yeah, I I heard from Papozi, but I still can be uh, as a student for you. I my I mean, Prof Yusuf can be my supervisor. Uh, maybe, perhaps as a co supervisor. Co co supervisor. Yeah, because uh, I'm waiting for some of my PhD students to finish, uh, but some of them still delay. Uh, so, because according according to MQA, one lecturer only has uh, can take up to maximum of ten PhD students. Right now, I have uh, uh, thirteen PhD students. And I'm waiting for them to graduate. So one one is going for the Viva very soon. And the other two, for some reasons, uh, they say they are busy to finish. The, the, they are ready for the Viva. They're supposed to go for the Viva. But for some reasons, because they are locals and they are working, they are mm. working as a lecturer. So for some reasons, they keep uh, delay, and I told them please finish as soon as possible, because uh, I want to take uh, other students under my supervision. Maybe I can be your co supervisor, so when when they finish, when they graduate, we can change the step okay. from co to main supervisor. Thank you very much. That's, that's the same with Mr. Sonko. Mr. Sonko also requested me to be main supervisor. Unfortunately, <laughs> I'm already full. <laughs> so now I'm a co-supervisor for Mr. Sonko. Yeah. yeah. But he, he always come and see me. Okay. And for some reasons, he didn't go to see his main supervisor. I think he <laughs> asked me also. He came to me, although I'm just coach provisor. <laughs> so I, I feel I, I will be, I have a plan. I will be uh, uh, stay nearby your house. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so then I can do like Mr. Sasanko. <laughs> he came to my office uh, mm. and sometimes I'm busy. Uh, I said, Mr. Sonko, please wait. So he waited for me, sometimes one hour, sometimes more than one hour. He's very patient. He keeps waiting. So thank yeah. you, Mr. Sonko. Alhamdulillah. You too, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and you are always busy. Yes, I'm yeah. always busy. Because I have many students, and uh, also I am the director for the Center for Islamic Finance. Yes. So as a director, you know, there are many meetings. Yeah. Yeah. Meetings in the morning, uh, in the evening. So yeah. uh, I always make a dua that... Uh, that uh, somebody else will be appointed as a new uh, director. Uh, but so far, my du'a uh, is not makbul. They always renew the, my term <laughs> as a <the> director. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually a rotation post, you know? <clears throat> every, mm, yeah. two years, every two years, 
uh, you know, it's supposed to be rotation. Eh? <coughs> so my term as director will end in, in June this year. So I keep making dua that somebody else will be appointed to replace me because I want to spend more time with my students and also more time with writing books. I have six books that still waiting for me to proofread. So, six. So, <laughs> and, um, I'm, I'm doing two research and they, they forced me to apply for another research. So I, I, told, I told them, you know, them, uh, those people, I don't want to mention who. So I told them, I'm not a superman. So yes. You expect me to, to do too much. Yeah. My interest is mainly in, in teaching and writing. But for for administrative work, I think I'm not I'm not a I'm not good at administrative work. Yeah. All right. So let's. Uh, can we take like a five minutes break before we start um, our first class? We will start yes. with simple, uh, simple topic: uh, introduction to research. So let's take a five minutes coffee break. Yeah? Okay. Sure. Okay. okay. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.
Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Sorry to take. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Sorry to take a little bit uh, longer. Uh, I prepared a coffee. Oh so, yeah. <laughs> I need a coffee. I have already. <laughs> so you can have a coffee or biscuit or whatever. Yes. While I'm being. <clears throat> <clears throat> All right, introduction to research. We will try to discuss <laughs> uh, research concept. So what is research? So research is defined as the creation of new knowledge. So when we do research, we try to examine what has been done and what is uh, the new knowledge that we want to create. So this is different from writing textbook. Uh, textbook is basically the writing about what uh, we already know, what we already know. And uh, the research is, is more than that. Research is about uh, creating a new knowledge, meaning you, know, you are trying to write something that uh, that we don't know yet, yeah. So it's it's um, uh, my professor said we go to where no one has gone before. So that that is a kind of uh, the creation of new knowledge. We we go to where no one has gone before, but but of course we we still need to see or study about what others have done and then we follow and continue to to explore the the new things like uh, mr sonko yes uh, professor he's trying to study the determinants of the adoption of uh, takafu in uganda and in uganda the takafu companies have not been in existence yet no Takaful companies yet, but he wants to see uh, if Takaful is um, uh, is established later. So, what are the factors that will determine whether people adopt the Takaful or not? So that that is kind of new knowledge because this kind of topic has not been researched yet in in the case of Uganda. So uh, research is also about the use of the existing knowledge. So some people, they make use of the existing knowledge and uh, create a new way or a creative way. Uh, look, look at the current uh, existing knowledge, but from perhaps different view, different perspective or new perspective. So the idea is to generate new knowledge, new concepts, and perhaps new methodologies of uh, finding out the, the, the truth, and then a new kinds of understanding about certain concepts. So in, in research, we have a pure research, we have applied research, and we have um, experimental research. But for the purpose of this class, we will discuss only two types of research, pure research and applied research. So pure research basically tries to examine what we already know, right? What has been done, what has been studied. And then we will know what uh, we don't know yet. So, so we, in pure research, we start with what we know, and then we determine what we don't know that we want to study. So, so that is pure research. So the problem or the research problem in pure research is um, a re we call research gap. Research gap means uh, what has been researched 
and uh, what has not been researched that we want to study. Uh, so that is pure research. Uh, so for, for researchers, something that we do not know, something that is not known, becomes our research problem that we want to study. However, in applied research, <clears throat> applied research concerns with the real world problems, uh, the real world issues that need solutions. So in applied research, the researchers um, try to uh, find what are the real world problems and what are the solutions uh, to solve that uh, real world problem. So that, that is the difference. Any any question about that one, about pure and applied research? Any example, Prof? Uh, an, an example? Yeah. Okay. So let me give you uh, an example. For example, in the case of Zakat. <clears throat> yeah. So let me make uh, this statement. Uh, since 2016, there is an increasing trend in the collection of uh, income zakat in the state of Kedah. Okay, so that is a statement. Yeah. Since 2016, there is uh, an increasing trend in the collection of income zakat in the state of Kedah. So, um, there are many studies that examine the factors that influence uh, the increase in the collection of uh, income zakat in the state of Kudah. For, uh, for instance, okay, so for, for instance, Haji Osman 2016, uh, Hanif, uh, I just made it up, Hanif 2013, and others, so you mentioned, that have studied the determinants of the um, the uh, the determinants of the um, uh, payment of income zakat, right? And and uh, some of the common uh, determinants are attitude subjective norm, knowledge, and service quality, okay? So that is what we know. So in the, what we don't know is, in the case of the collection of income zakat in the state of Kedah, what are the determinants that um, influence the, the, the payment of income zakat? So this study tries to examine further uh, other determinants that could have significant influence on the collection of income zakat, such as uh, religiosity, uh, trust, uh, and the moral obligation. So that is pure research. Um, okay, so that is an example of the problem statement in pure research. Let me give you an example uh, in the case of uh, applied research. So in applied research, we want to find out the, the real problems uh, regarding the, uh, the, uh, the uh, increase in the collection of income zakat, right? So from applied research, that is not a problem. The collection of income zakat has been increasing. So that is not a problem. <laughs> right. So yeah. applied research wants to focus on the issues uh, or the real problems. So if, if we say there is an increasing trend in the collection of income zakat, so that is not a problem. So applied research needs to transform that into a problem. For example, in applied research, 
it, it can be written something like this. Although there is an increasing trend in the uh, collection of income zakat in Kedah, um, the, the collection is still low compared to the target collection. Yeah, the, the level of um, uh, the actual collection of income zakat is uh, is at a low level compared to the target collection of income zakat. So, for example, income zakat, for example, the target for income zakat collection is, okay, you mentioned how many, uh, how many millions of, I just, let me try to make up, eh? because, yeah. I don't, uh, for example, the target collection of income zakat in the state of Kedah for 2022 was 8 million ringgit. However, the actual collection was only uh, less than 1 million ringgit. I, I just make that up. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. so that is the issue. So in applied research, we want to highlight the issue. Yeah. However, in the peer research, uh, we don't need to highlight the actual issue. We just need to highlight what we already know and what we do not know. In applied research, on the other hand, we need to highlight what are the real world issues, real world problems, and uh, what, what are the solutions. So in applied research, we say, although the, there is an increasing trend in the collection of income zakat in Kedah, the, the actual collection is still at a low level compared to the target um, to the uh, target uh, collection of income zakat. So this study attempts to um, to examine the the uh, what, how do I say the the issues and try to find solutions of how to increase the income zakat uh, so that in the, future, <clears throat> the level of uh, income zakat will be uh, yes. higher and closer to the target collection, something like that. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, some of the figures, I just made it up because uh, I don't yes. have the, the real data. But at least it gives you the idea of the difference in uh, the approach of uh, pure research and applied research. So in Islamic finance, sometimes we combine both pure research and also the applied research in, in our problem statement. There's no problem to combine. Eh? But if you want to stick for example, you say, oh, I want to do uh, pure research. I just want to examine uh, or to study what has not been studied before. So that is pure research. If you say this study wants to find solutions to the problems, that is a that is an applied research. So you, you can also stick to what kind of research you want to do. Any questions, Brother Sonko? <laughs> Not yet, Professor. Uh, am I making you confused? No, 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 I'm on the track. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You can ask. Okay, so in my class, uh, PhD candidates are encouraged to ask and, you know, to participate. No? It shouldn't okay. be uh, It shouldn't be one way one-way communication. It shouldn't be. Otherwise, okay. this class will be boring. Oh, yeah. I will ask you. <laughs> <clears throat> so we fall into the category of social research. Islamic finance is in the category of social research. We intend to produce knowledge, okay, and try to understand uh, our situation, or we call our social world. Okay, so we want to, uh, for example, study about 
why we do like this, why is our behavior like this? So that that is our feel. We try to understand now uh, why something is like that. What are the factors that influence, you know, a certain phenomena? For example, if, for example, our collection of zakat is increasing, what uh, are the factors that influence the, the increasing trend? So basically, <clears throat> we want to understand uh, if something happened, okay, why it happens like that? So the, the factors. Uh, everything that we do has a reason. You, you come to this class, you have reasons. You have the factors. Huh? You want to increase the knowledge. Uh, okay, like, like uh, Bapa Adi says, uh, you want to, you have interest to study a certain topic. Yeah, so everything that we do, we have, uh, we have reasons. Yeah? <clears throat> Social research has developed as a way of building knowledge that promotes agreed upon practices within the research commun community that help us avoid the limitation and pitfalls of other ways of knowing. Prof, may I ask? Sure, sure. Okay. Prof, uh, in a point of uh, point of uh, point of view from your side of as an uh, academicians, uh, there there is a bunch of uh, findings that stated dalam uh, which is various research from the uh, mostly is a uh, uh, researchers in Malaysia uh, acceptance of industry players uh, towards the research uh, finding from research. Uh, in context of Malaysia, lah, Prof, eh, uh, how many percent acceptance of industry players towards the 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 finding of research that uh, mostly uh, focusing on the Islamic finance? Very good question. And uh, my, my opinion is there is still a gap between what we do in the academic area and what uh, the practitioners uh, really want from from our research. So, uh, <clears throat> in uh, pure research, in pure research, we are more interested in what we don't know yet, right? And it has less uh, practical implications. Yeah? So we just do research for the purpose of increasing our knowledge, uh, increasing our understanding. But in applied research, we are trying to help the policy makers and also the practitioners uh, in, in applied research. So we are trying to find solutions to a certain problems. Um, I don't have the number as to uh, how many, what, what, what percentage of the uh, research uh, that, is, uh, that is used by the policy makers and practitioners. But when we do research, one part of our uh, writing is the uh, contributions to uh, re uh, contributions to theories, contributions to practice, yeah? and in the contributions to practice, we try to uh, uh, elaborate on how the findings of this research can be used by the authorities, by the policymakers, as well as by the industries. Uh, so, uh, I, 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 I have a sense that, uh, you know, we need to have a closer relationship uh, between the academicians and the uh, practitioners. Mm -hmm. so, uh, Otherwise, they akan jadi macam uh, apa seronok sendiri apa? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Macam seronok sendiri kan? Buat buat research, tapi dia duduk di rock di di shelf. Eh? 
di library hmm. ada ada di <coughs> honestly to say prof uh, honestly to say that i'm very hardly to find out uh, uh, in term of topic my top in term of my topic is arah nu is a pergadaian pak di ya apa i'm hardly to find that, that uh kind of applied research uh doing by the our researcher very very hardly yes yes uh -huh. compared to mr muhammad mr susoko in term of the uh, under topic is takaful takaful is quite yeah. quite quite diverse in the uh, malaysian market but yeah. arah nu is a uh for your info there's uh uh apa Trapatai di uh, uh, what we call is regulating the arah new business in Malaysia. One is a bank negara, is our uh, central bank. One is a cooperative, uh, Surahanjaya Cooperasi is consists of cooperative movement, and then one is a KPKT. Uh, yeah, uh, there is no such of research in that on the arah new business that can regulate as a one silo uh, there's a, um, honestly i'm say my topic is very hard to find any 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 rujukan lah hmm. yes that that's and uh, that's a sad truth uh -huh. so, uh, like like i mentioned before Uh, there is still a gap uh, between you know what academicians do and what the the industries need um, so in the case of rahnu uh, there are not uh, uh, in fact there are not many that the, the 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 literature is not that voluminous yeah i mean mm -hmm. there are still limited literature on rahnu Uh, in terms of the pure research, apatah uh, lagi in terms of the uh, applied research. Yeah? So I think yeah, there there, there are still limited um, studies on on that. So that that's why we do research. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, that's what motivates us to do research. Yeah, so when we find that there are still scarce uh, studies. On, on a certain topic that that could be one of the motivations um, yeah in in my case i i tried to get closer with uh, uh takaful eh? uh, last year i finished uh, one consultancy project with fwd takaful on on the uh, new uh, strategies of Uh, promotion for the FWD family Takaful products. So Takaful uh, granted us a ten thousand ringgit, and then the the findings of the study was submitted to FWD Takaful, and hopefully the some of the strategies that we recommended in the research. Uh, could be used by the FWD Takaful. So that uh, that's one of the ways to bridge the gap yeah, between the academicians and the and the uh, uh, the industries. And this year, I'm writing a proposal on the uh, determinants of the adoption of uh, uh, Takaful uh, uh, of the FWD. Uh, family takafu product in Malaysia and uh, inshallah mm, I will be granted a uh, 50,000 ringgit um, to examine what are the factors that uh, might influence the uh, adoption of uh, FWD family takafu because the adoption uh, currently is still low so we want to find you know what are the factors that are significant uh, so that the the findings of the research could be used uh, by the fwd 
takkan fusion yang berhad to to perhaps a formulate a, a promotion strategies uh, to to increase further the adoption of uh, FWD family takaful because one of the aims of this product is to uh, to be more inclusive because takaful is perceived as something that is exclusive you know for those who <clears throat> who can afford for those have those people who can afford it yeah? but uh, <clears throat> fwd family takaful is trying to be more inclusive and it targets um, the b40 group <clears throat> so that we want everybody uh, to be able to afford uh, family takaful at least so so that that's one of the ways to to uh, bridge the gap but uh, i agree with uh Saifudin, eh? there are still not, not, not a lot to be done eh? uh, in in this one in this uh, effort to bridge the gap between um, uh, research and the applicability of the research. So some people, uh, you know, are, are, are of the opinion that uh, what's the use of research if it's not uh, meant to improve, you know, our our life. Uh, so uh, I I kind of uh, agree with that statement. So at, at this stage of my career, I'm I'm still trying, I'm still trying to do a research and at the same time, uh, try to present at seminars. And uh, during the pandemic, yeah, uh, most of the conferences were online, so it's uh, it's free to 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 present. You just present from your from your home so i took that to uh to the full advantage and during the two years i think i presented more than 40 papers online because it's cheaper if if you go for example if you go to jakarta to present yeah, face to face yeah. it might cost me three thousand that you know that i might have to spend three thousand in advance yeah, and then I will I will submit the the claim, but if uh, we we do the online presentation, so we don't need to worry about the cost. So I took full advantage of that. In fact, I I, present, I presented a lot of papers in Indonesia, because Indonesia are very active in promoting the con the conferences eh, on on certain uh, issues. So I found Indonesia is very proactive. So I make a joke. Uh, my my um, neighbors don't know who I am and don't even know my name. But online, I'm well known in Indonesia. <laughs> so many Indonesian people. So, so I'm, I'm well known internationally, you know, because I present. Uh, online <laughs> at my home in my home you know but my neighbors don't even know my name <laughs> prof cewek ke cowok cewek or cowok cewek cowok maybe pak adi can 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 uh, describe what, what is Sorry, it, he asking whether it's woman or man who, who <laughs> didn't know your name. <laughs> both, both of them. Yeah, <clears throat> both of them. My neighbor called me Pachi. <laughs> he doesn't even know my name. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pachi said it. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, both, both men and women. Uh, the, my other neighbors uh, are teachers of um, what they call Tasca. Eh? Tasca, in English, I, I don't know. 
the kindergarten eh? oh kindergarten kindergarten yeah. i i i have a a neighbor that convert their house into kindergarten so yeah. they have a kindergarten teachers yeah they always call me pachi i feel, uh, yeah i feel okay as long as they don't call me grandfather Kalau <laughs> or grandfather, I will feel very old. But I still feel I'm still young. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, my neighbors don't know my name. They call me Pachi. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so in, in, in research, what we do is we want to uh, find the truth, right? Because nowadays you see in in the development of technology, we have uh, Facebook, uh, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. And I find that well, they have many beliefs, personal beliefs, right? But uh, personal beliefs is nothing. You can say whatever that you believe in. But in research, we want to find out if that belief is true or not. So in order to do that, we have to, you know, we have to find out um, the truth of the matter. Okay. Kerajaan Perpaduan, misalnya, menawarkan apa ni, apa ni menu rahma ya yeah. so macam-macam pandangan eh? menu rahma ni bagus menu rahma ni tak bagus itu personal beliefs you can say whatever you want but in, if you do research then we want to find out the impact of menu rahma ha uh, yang tu kena 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 ada fakta ya yeah, jadi bila kita buat research kena ada fakta eh? ha, itu yang yeah. membezakan kita dengan Orang yang tidak buat research. Orang tidak buat research, dia bebas kata apa saja. Ya. Yeah. Uh, dan dan dia, 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 sometimes dia jadi fitnah. Eh? Bila bila mengatakan sesuatu yang tidak berdasarkan fakta, dia jadi. Dan 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 dia tak, tidak betul, maka dia jadi uh, fitnah. Eh? So, banyak-banyak fitnah. Eh? So, I don't... Uh, some people say, Prof, what do you think about kata-kata uh, ini ya, hmm. adakah dia fitnah atau tidak? So my my comment is, uh, if a personal belief, <coughs> you say something about somebody, and you have no proof, okay, uh, and it's not true, maka that is a that is a fitnah. Eh? So. Uh, for me, I always try to say something only when I can support uh, the 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 belief with with fakta. Uh, itu yang membezakan researcher, itu membezakan uh, academician. Eh? <laughs> uh, sometimes uh, in WhatsApp group, uh, some people they complain about me, like in my family WhatsApp group. Eh? Uh, my brother said. There are some experts in this group uh, that know about uh, uh, economics, uh, know about certain things, eh? but that person uh, don't say anything. This person just keep quiet. <laughs> <laughs> My brothers, they, sometimes they force me to say something, but sometimes I'm too busy. And I don't want to say something just for the sake of saying it. You know, I will say something only if I have the fact. I say something, for example, boleh kau buat macam ni, macam ni. So, I will refer to mufti, wilayah, or something when it, uh, it it is concerned with religious matters. Kita tak boleh just kata macam tu. Eh? Kita, kalau saya cakap, oh, mesti ada fakta. Ataupun apa-apa isu lah. Mesti ada fakta. So that, that, that is a research. We can refute 
or, or accept those personal beliefs. Kalau dia kata sesuatu ada fakta menyokong, then kita kita terima lah. Kalau dia kata sesuatu dan fakta itu uh, tidak menyokong, refute, then uh, kita tidak terima lah. My friend said the difference between uh, PhD holders and those who speak or those who talk or discuss in coffee shops you know what's what's the difference people uh, who talks you know at coffee shops or some place they just give, give them give the personal beliefs just say something it's free eh? you you can say anything but PhD holders they will not say anything unless it is a fact <laughs> so when I go to this, you know, to coffee shops, the gray gray minum kopi dengan kawan, I always keep quiet. <laughs> Unless I know something, then I speak. Okay. So, Mr. Sonko, yeah. what what is your comment? <laughs> Uh, Michael, um, it's not much uh, what I can say. Oh, I need your clarification. Like um, you talked about pure research and uh, applied research. So for my case, the research I'm doing, is it applied research? It's, it's more of, I think it's a combination. It's more of a pure research. Yes. Because you want to study something that has not been studied before. Yes. But it contains also the elements of applied research because some of some of your findings yes. might solve the problems of um, um, determine, determinants of the adoption of uh, Takaful once it is established. So yes. because it might the your your research might be might have some uh what we call the policy implications so, okay so i think it's it's both yeah it's both All right so the uh to case of uh, experimental research uh this one uh, science what he, the kind of research they do i think he, uh, they do experimental research yeah and in in islamic finance uh, I've never, I've not seen yet any experiment uh, research. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is for science, mostly. It's, it's mostly for science. Okay. Uh, in, and engineers? Yeah, perhaps. Because, okay, okay, okay. Uh, because uh, the lab can be the physical lab, can be the social lab. Uh, okay. To do experiment, uh, we have to have control group, and okay. then the the uncontrolled group. Uh, so uh, I I have not done any research uh, using the uh, experiments. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I, I I don't know much, so I don't want to comment on something I don't know. All right. <laughs> So we are mostly uh, using uh, pure and applied research. Okay. I'm not very um, creative, you know. There are some people who are creative. You know, they want to do something yeah. that has not been done before. Something. No, I'm, I'm not that type of person. So when, when I did PhD, I just found a topic that has been done before, and then I, I tried to do something in a different way. So because I, I just want to finish my PhD. I don't want to do, you know, um, experiment type of approach. I just did the quantitative ap approach, yeah? because. Because the quantitative approach was done by many people. And I just uh, changed a little bit about the methodology uh, and uh, about the 
theoretical framework of the study. So, Mr. Sonko, uh, we just want to finish our PhD. Yeah. <laughs> Kala. So, uh, let's not try to be too creative. <laughs> because at okay. PhD, PhD is about, my professor said, PhD about is about um, telling a believable story. Okay, you have, you have something. Story. Yeah, you 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 want to you have certain objectives, right? You, that you want to study, and then you find the data, and then you just justify that this data supports or do not support uh, what you want to study. Um, this data support or does not support your hypothesis. Yeah, this data answers or not uh, your research questions. Uh, this data or the findings uh, can achieve what you want to, what the objective that you set out. So it's, it's, that's why he said, it's about telling a believable story. Story means your hypothesis, what you want to study, right? Yeah. You put in hypothesis, right? And then you go and find the data, and then your data either support or or reject your hypothesis. Um, the most important is the reasons or the justifications. If the data support your hypothesis, then you justify, and then you try to make your the examiners believe what you say. So believable means uh, something that is justified. And if the, the data does not support, then you need to explain why. In this case, the data does not support. But for PhD students, they are very happy if the data support the hypothesis. But yes. if the data does not support the hypothesis, or they cannot sleep, how am I going <laughs> to justify, you know, and make other people believe, you know, make other people believe is, is quite important. Other people means, the examiners, yeah. So the the supervisor is like uh, is like uh, the coach. If if you play soccer, if you yes. play soccer, you need a coach to teach you how to uh, how to play. So that's the role of supervisor, helping you. Your supervisor will be on your side, but the examiner, the examiners are the one who will pass or fail you. So the examiners are like the referee yeah, who will give you judgment. So or let me give you another example. Uh, there is a, what we call the voice on TV, the voice, yeah? uh, the song contest. You know what I'm talking about? The voice. So yeah. people go on stage and sing. And there are juries. There are juries here yeah, who will say whether your song is uh, good or not. Your performance is good or not. That is the examiner. Okay. And the supervisors are the ones who help you. Who help. Uh, uh, can, you, can you give me two minutes? Yeah. Okay, Hatta, okay. Yes, see, brother, my elder brother, Saifuddin. Yeah, yeah, Mr. Susanko. What is your topic? Uh, I'm proposing for the uh, pawn shop business. Yes. What? Pawn shop, pawn shop is a pawn shop. Yeah, a rahnu. You are study topic. Yeah, yeah. Comparison the uh, business, uh, comparison Malaysian and Indonesia, uh, business type, uh, type of business are uh, rahnu. Hmm. This is under which area? Yeah. Which is a. Uh, Financial services, 
Yeah. We, uh, we got the we got the regulation of the Malaysia uh, under Malaysian Act, which is uh what we call is uh, Arahnu Business. Arahnu. Arahan Business. Arahan, yeah, Arahan, yeah. Is it under banking? Yep. Yeah. Uh, uh, because but, he... but then but then is uh, regulated by the central bank okay uh, regulate, uh, another is a uh, kementerian perumahan and kerajaan tempatan uh, yeah. uh, what we call is a uh, KPKT and the third one is Suruhanjaya Koperasi Malaysia okay uh, so what is the most important credit knowledge I know about yeah uh, what is very important uh -huh. is uh, to be knowing your area of speciality, area of specialization. Mm -hmm. Like uh, in Islamic banking and finance, mm -hmm. as a course name, mm -hmm. there are like uh, four or five areas you can do research. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, for example, we have uh, banking. Mm -hmm. We have uh, Takaful, that is Islamic insurance. Mm -hmm. We have uh, micro. Micro credit. Yes, micro financing oh, yeah. and whatever. Right. There is a school. Social finance, where the kind of You get yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, my feel is. Uh more related to b40 uh, b40 area b40 okay. such as a low income uh, low income uh, members uh, which is where is the income band is uh, 1000 uh, 2500 and below okay uh, what uh, what i'm focusing is need uh, what are the need needs from them uh to uh, to use a run uh a run business uh, okay. uh to make up the 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 new income for them so it is a kind of micro finance more or less more or less more or less a micro finance and part of it is a banking oh uh we attach it uh what we call is a uh, upper uh tawaru uh okay. What we call is Tawaro, and then yeah, yeah, more or less is a micro financing, okay, because that is a very important, no, mm -hmm. yeah, it yeah, can help you to know the kind of information you will gather, especially mm. in literature, yeah, yeah, but yeah. Uh, uh, one part maybe, maybe is uh, will involve the Takaful, okay, uh. What yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Uh, what I find is, uh, part of the finance will be yeah. covered by Takaful. Yes, yes. Mm. Mm -mm. Okay. You are staying in Alusta, isn't it? Yes. You are staying where? Alusta or right. right now I'm in Kuala Ketel. Kuala Ketel. Though I'm here like for a week or two weeks, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'll be going back to Alusta. Yeah. Uh -huh. At Mahaddin. Oh, Mahaddin. Yes. Uh, Mahaddini. Mahaddin. Mahaddini. Yes. Uh, you already known as Ustaz Faisal, isn't it? Professor is back. Doctor, Doctor Faisal. Doctor Faisal. Yeah. From Zakat. From Zakat. Yeah. Okay, Professor. Welcome back. <laughs> Um, Mr. Zikru Amin is going to stop by, drop by in a few minutes. Okay. Mr. Sonko, you remember Mr. Zikru Amin? Yes, yes, yes. He's, he drives you around. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he will stop by. Okay. In a few minutes, he just called. I said, okay. All right. Okay, let, uh, so uh, it's interesting what what uh, Inchek Saifuddin mentioned about the the. Uh, oh, I think I think he's here already. Uh, 
Can you give me five minutes to meet with uh, Mr. Zikro Amin? Okay, is... Prof. Uh, thank you. Bye, bye Prof. We, we bye, can Prof. discuss each other. Yeah, you uh -huh. can discuss with each other. I will be back, inshallah. Yeah. Inshallah, inshallah. Yeah. Brother Sasanko. Yes, sir. I thought you also joined the class 2022, right? Like me. Yeah, but he, there were <laughs> some papers uh, that we are pending. Oh, I had like to me, travel yeah. to Malaysia by that time, but I didn't manage. Uh, okay, yeah. like me. Yeah, yeah. I also have some papers problem. Yeah. Okay. Uh, which because... where are you, which kind of this area you uh you are doing your research? Oh <clears throat> actually I just want to continue my thesis on the master thesis. Yes. Where the Prop Yusuf also at that time uh, I doing the FGD. So Prop Yusuf, one of the experts uh, yes. who joined the FGD. Yes. Uh, my master thesis is related with the integrated halal integrated uh, management system. All right. So uh, I now uh, trying to to get a topic same as a uh, prof Yusuf thesis is related with the compliance behavior. Okay. So if you're talking about halal, then you have to be compliant, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. There's no doubt. Yeah? We have to be <laughs> compliant. <laughs> yeah. No, no reason. Whatever you cannot be a reason. So uh, yes. that is what I want to check. Uh, let's say how to find out what we didn't know, what we didn't know yet. Yeah. How is the compliance we have here about that? Great. So yeah, otherwise. Because... We... We need to yeah. guide one another in the case of any challenge. Yeah. Because uh, our professors, sometimes they might give uh, information which is helpful to another. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 They are always busy, yeah. especially Professor Yusuf. Yeah, it's very busy. Eh? Oh. Everyone wants him to be his supervisor. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sometimes he was and never reply, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everyone doing PhD. Yeah. Want mm. him to be his supervisor. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Mr. Suzuko, I'm looking forward for next week. I'm going back to Alusta. Yes. Maybe we can meet up at some point. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Hope next week I'll be in your Alistair. Ah, thank you. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully we can we we can meet yeah, up uh, somewhere, somewhere yeah. around in Alistair. Yeah. Uh, so maybe I call Pak Sasongko. Eh? Yes. Not brother, but Pak Sasongko. <laughs> if in Malaysia, why, then why? you become. <laughs> We do you become in Indonesia? Everybody will call you Pak, <laughs> but in Malaysia oh. you call Pak Ci. Eh? So I will call you Pak. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Inshallah. Is it okay for you? Alhamdulillah. <laughs> okay. Pak Sosanko, how until when you will be in Malaysia? I'm in Malaysia. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean up to up to when? When you will back to Uganda? Uh, it is about two, three to four months, but still it will maybe depend on other needs. You have business in Malaysia? Not yet, not yet. Oh. I have a brother I'm waiting to come. Okay. For him, he's finishing PhD. Ah. Uh. He's finishing, but he's coming. I came before him. Yeah. So there are things I'm still waiting to see how I can manage my family. Your family in Malaysia as well? No, no, no. My family is in Uganda. Oh, okay. So How many flight? hours? Flight hours? Yes. They are like a 13 to 14. 13. Wow. 13 hours. Oh, wow. 13 hours. Too long, eh? Yeah, too long. But which part, uh, which part of Indonesia you, you live? Uh, 
I just uh, outside of Jakarta, I call it Bekasi. Bekasi. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm always going to to the Indonesia, but only Bandung. not uh, not for not for studying, but playing golf. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh. oh, I'm not playing golf. <laughs> uh. Why are you playing golf? Yeah, maybe it's a uh, normally it's a business trip, lah. Business trip. Yeah, I I mean, where where is it? In 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 Jakarta or in Bogor? Ah, uh, which place? Uh, normally it's in Jakarta, uh, Royal Jakarta is a uh, Bogor. Oh. Or, uh, yeah. Oh, Royal Jakarta. Uh, yeah. Mostly. Yeah. 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 Uh -huh. I, I'm not playing golf. <laughs> uh, I I uh, love more uh, soccer eh, and soccer. badminton, <laughs> but never playing again. And now it's already. Uh, <laughs> Indonesian language say Lansia is already older. <laughs> <laughs> your stamina, your breathing is not coming, <laughs> not suitable anymore. Uh, so. Okay. We are use we are use uh contact to the uh we always contact to the ESQ Pak Ari Ginanjar. Oh, uh, 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 our program is always uh, attached with ESQ. Hmm. Okay. Uh -huh. Pari Naja. Yeah. It's a famous one. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. It's difficult to see him. Eh? <laughs> He's very, uh -huh. very busy. Very... Yeah. 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 Okay. So, Pak Sasoko, the... you, maybe Pak yes. Sasoko, you never, you never in Jakarta, Pak Sasoko? I never. Oh, you should come, yeah. I never, Some, maybe sometime. in the future, inshallah. Oh. Yeah, yeah, you should come. Yeah. Fauji will uh, entertain you. Lah. How long from Malaysia to Indonesia? Two hours. Two hours only. Yeah, oh. Two hours only. It's, oh. it's close. Oh. Oh. So you just uh, go to Penang and after that take the flight to, to Penang, Jakarta. Mm. Very near. Yeah, very near. Oh, Insya Allah, uh, maybe. Yeah, yeah. So Malaysia and Indonesia actually is brother. Yeah, I, I can see. Mm. <laughs> brother in blood. <laughs> yeah, brother in blood. Yeah, it's right. <laughs> Most brother, uh, Malaysia and uh, Indonesia compared to Malaysia. Yeah, Indonesia, Singapore. Yeah. Hmm. Since you are neighbors, you have to be together very close. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So have the, you the ever food... traveled to any African country? Me? No, not yet. Oh. Not yet. But I I, I like to be uh, like Morocco or mm. maybe... Uh, oh, oh, I'm sorry. I've been there in, in Egypt. I forgot oh, yeah, Egypt yeah. is is Africa. Yeah. So, but it's only a few days because it's just written back from Palestine. Mm. But I cannot fly back. I have to stay there uh, additional two days because of the weather. Okay. So they now allow uh, the flight to uh, to fly. Oh. Because of. Uh, uh, oh, what do you call it? Uh, storm? Storm. Something like that. Uh, something like that. Okay. So we stay, we stay between hotel and uh, airport only. Oh. So so tired that time. Because of Shala, maybe, in the, maybe in the future, we will try to come to our country and see the beauty. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. so, uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank Never you. been in Africa uh, before. Oh. Never okay. been. Uh, Never been. Uh, Nairobi. So, uh, mm. Nairobi. How, how far how far uh, Egypt to Uganda? Ah, it is like uh, one, one, one hour and a half to two hours, not far. Oh, oh. right, okay. Okay, okay. Yeah, not far. Okay. Yeah. 
so how how the situation i mean the the the, the landscape well, yeah. similar landscape. like egypt uh, it is not um where the weather is not far from um, that of Malaysia, we have our time of rain, we have sunshine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we don't have hot, you don't have cold. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So it's tropical country, right? Yeah, 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 we are within the equator. Uh, how, how about the rain, rainy season? Is it like us, Malaysia or Indonesia? Now, normal rainy season is between the uh, August and uh, January. Okay. Then uh, now they are going uh, again for another season, uh, March to uh, June. March to June still rain? Yes, two season, two rain season. Oh, two now? Yeah. Oh. Well, like Indonesia now, now is ra rainy season never stopped. Oh, sometimes we call a dry, dry rainy. Oh, because uh, the weather is already changed. Yeah. Okay. So it's sometimes difficult. Yeah, you need to be to go oh. out more often, but rain is sometimes make it stop. Oh, because sometimes you need to be outside. Eh? Oh, Outdoor. when it is so, too hot. Yeah, <laughs> but now it's too cold. Oh, for us, even though it's, it's, it's not snowing, but it's too cold now. Okay. <laughs> what are the famous for Uganda, Pak Sosoko? Famous what? What are the famous? Uh, yeah, if I may tourist, and I'm from, from Malaysia, came to the come to Uganda. Uh, mm. what are the famous? Uh, famous things can I find the, in Uganda? Uganda, I can find, find the like um, when nature, nature, oh, nature, nature, like a food. <laughs> we have uh, nature which is not uh, organic. Uh, the others, uh, the side is which uh, is not modified. Mm -hmm. Natural yes. Park, lah. Yes. Mm. We have many natural things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The weather, the land. How about the food? Yes. Yeah, how about if the food in Uganda? Is you also eating rice? Yes, yes, yes. We have rice. We have portion from maize. Mm -hmm. And our local food is called the matoke. Matoke? Yeah, you know matoke? No. Never heard before. Oh, uh -huh. that is our local food. Uh -huh. Yeah. How to spell matoke? Yeah. How to pay, how to spell matoke? Matoke it is M M A. Uh -huh. T double O. Okay. K E. Matoke matoke matoke. Mm -hmm. That is our local food. Is it uh, from rice or is it from bread or what? A target is like a banana plant. Oh, banana. Yeah. <coughs> oh, like is a. Uh... Oh. Yeah. It's green in color. Oh, what is the difference with banana? Yes. What, what is the difference with banana? For it, it is a green in color. It is a prepared before it is uh, ripe. For banana, you have to wait until it gets ripe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
uh, I see it now in uh, Google. Yeah, I have I've seen it. I already Google. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, that is our local yes. food. I think it's very, very good. Eh? Yeah. What I found is I got a dried dried chilies up there, and then. Yeah. <laughs> uh, ah, I remember. Uh, one time my daughter bought yes. me uh, what they call African rice. Yes. And then uh, is a long green rice with chicken. And oh. then uh, they provide uh, banana with uh, yes. uh, sp spicy. Eh? Oh, oh, so it's nice. I like it. Yeah. Oh. oh, okay, okay. Then I can go to Uganda <laughs> because yeah, I can nah. eat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> So between uh, Egypt, Morocco, and Uganda is nearby. It's neighborhood. Uh, Morocco is a bit far. Oh, a bit far. Though not very far. Okay. But it's somehow far. Okay. Yeah. So most closer is to Egypt, yeah? Yeah, yeah. So our system for exam banking is still new. Yeah, <laughs> Our system for exam banking and uh, finance. Yeah. Okay. Is it still new in the country? Uh, sorry, I, I have something to do. Uh, two minutes. Okay. Never mind. Never mind. Oh, my never mind, buddy. Never mind, buddy. Um, so I was saying. Uh huh. Our system in the area of Islamic banking and the finance mm -hmm. is it still new. Uh, for me, eh? yeah. For us, uh, in the for country, us. Uh, it's still new. It is new. Uh, in in Uganda or Malaysia? Yeah, in Uganda. Uganda, yeah. 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 Maybe uh, in Malaysia is that uh, as as I know in Malaysia. Islamic banking and finance was started in 1983, if not, if I'm not mistaken, 1983. It's uh, over three decades. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, it's over. Uh, but then Islamic banking is uh, evolved time to time. And then yeah. there is a, a Single act for the Islamic banking and finance. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Uh, like before, the, our our banking sector is combined uh, yeah. between conventional and Islamic. But then, there is separation of the uh, separation of the uh, profit and loss account statement. There is yeah. a, it's a good and then but then, yeah. Most of uh, most of the 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 players in industry, uh, okay. never refers to the what what have rule and do and don'ts in Islamic okay. uh, practices. Yeah, uh, most of them is uh, they are used to the, the they are used to uh refers to the conventional one. Okay. Uh, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. It yeah. is somewhere, somewhere to start lah. Somewhere to start. Malaysia, Malaysia. I see Malaysia is doing better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in in kind of knowledge, they are good. Hmm. Education system. Yeah, maybe maybe part of the uh, banking area, but then. Under the cooperative bank, uh, cooperative sector is quite, quite.
quite low understanding uh, hmm. uh, compared to the banking. Okay. Hmm. But then, yeah, mine from uh, my vast experience uh, from banking, and then when I'm joined to cooperative, yes, it's uh quite difficult to 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 un up to to expedite my expertise to the cooperative. Okay. Because, uh, yeah, uh, more or less cooperative sectors, uh, the players, uh, so called the players. In the cooperative is kind of the uh sixties and almost reaching uh seventy seventy of age, ages. Okay. And then okay. they had they very hard to 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 accept new things and new 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 approach of the how to run the cooperative. Yeah. Okay, sorry, sorry, I'm back. Okay, welcome back. There was my master's student who is on the way from uh, Langkawi and uh, going back to his hometown in Kelantan uh -huh. uh, because Kolakata is like in the middle. <laughs> so he just stopped by. Oh. And, uh, he, he dropped by and um, he gives he gave me lots of anchovies, dried anchovies. Yeah, yeah, the, uh, the, you know, yes, blue, blue eyes, blue eyes, <laughs> blue eyes. <laughs> okay. <anchovies. laughs> uh, Mister Sonko, you know dried anchovies? Not yet. <laughs> it's, it's a very small fish. Oh, and we dry it. And uh, during Ramadan, uh, mm. there are many many uses of dried anchovies. Okay, we can, we can make make it into various uh, dishes. Okay. Uh, so Alhamdulillah. Uh, Alhamdulillah. I I plan I plan to get anchovies from uh, uh, from one of the places here. Okay. This evening, but he happened to come to come by and gave me the best anchovies, the most expensive anchovies, which oh. Oh. 70 oh. kilogram, sorry, 70 ringgit per kilogram. Oh, oh. blue eye uh, anchovies. All right. I think it's about 70 ringgit. Eh? Uh, okay. it's a food, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh -huh. Yeah. It's mm. 70 ringgit per kilogram, the best one. Okay. Correct, correct. Oh. Okay. So, okay, let's continue and try to finish this slide. Okay, so there are several level of research. The lowest level is called uh, exploration or exploratory research. So exploratory research is done on a topic that is uh, under research, meaning the topic that has not been done uh, before. So, uh, so when when a certain topic, uh, you know, there are not many research that has been done on that topic. So you are kind of one of the uh, pioneers in the in doing the research. So it's called the uh, exploratory research because not many research has been done on the topic. So exploratory research can uh, help us fill a gap in our knowledge about a new topic or about under-researched topic. You know, for example, Mr. Sonko. Yes. Uh, the topic of, about takaful in Uganda. Yes. Maybe a new topic or under-researched yes. topic. Okay. Mr. Saifuddin also, perhaps uh, is 
the the research on Arrahnu perhaps is also uh, an under research uh, topic yeah yeah bro so when researchers conduct a literal literature review uh, the researchers will find that uh, there are not many uh, literature review on on the topic yeah so usually we we come up short yeah not not many uh, studies that have been done on the topic so this absence of adequate uh, research uh, shows that this uh, topic is still uh, under research okay so, okay so such a research <clears throat> may need further in investigation in further studies huh? so that's what we want to do and so we want to do something to to study something that is uh, that has not been done before so we need perhaps we we need <laughs> develop a suitable plan, a suitable strategy uh, to, to, to come up with uh, uh, to come up with the data, eh? new strategies to collect data, uh, a strategy to analyze data, because perhaps previous studies have not uh, give a full elaboration on, on the methodology because there are not many so so that is a challenge to develop a suitable uh, research design or suitable methodology uh, to answer the research questions and to achieve the research uh, objectives that we set out um, at, in chapter one of our uh, thesis so Accordingly, this uh, initial research may point researchers towards certain research questions. So we need to be creative on how to write research questions. And we need to be creative also on the methods for data collection, the participants. Uh, and then, um, for example, if we want to explore how young people of different backgrounds have used social media, for example, to learn about or share their ideas about this event. So th those are the kind of exploratory studies, an example of uh, exploratory studies, uh, because not many have been done. Yeah? Okay, the, the second type is description. Description is quite a simple. So we just uh, describe uh, the phenomena or the behavior of individuals, behavior of groups, activities. This, this, uh, this is uh, quite simple. Usually it is presented in table form or in a pie chart uh, about certain phenomena. For example, uh, the description about the collection of uh, zakat, right? So we just present in the table form the the zakat collection from, for example, two thousand to two thousand twenty-two, and then we just uh, describe. So for description, we don't have to explain why uh, a certain phenomena a certain phenomena occurs. For example. Uh, if we want to describe uh, the the increase in data collection, right? So we just simply describe. There is no causal relationship. We don't need to explain, uh, for example, the factors uh, that influence uh, the increase in the zakat collection. So for PhD, uh, it, it needs to be more than description. For masters and undergraduate, perhaps it's okay to present uh, data and uh, to do to describe, unless you are very good at um, at uh, describing certain things. Bahasa Melayu nya pandai goreng ya, Kalau pandai goreng itu okay lah. Uh, dalam, <laughs> dia ada data dalam bentuk table ke dalam bentuk catapai dia pandai goreng bagi banyak kan 
then it's okay. Otherwise, uh, kalau macam saya tak pandai goreng kan, just explain tahun ni naik, tahun ni naik, lepas tu tak tahu lagi nak kata. <laughs> tak sesuai lah untuk PhD. Ya. <laughs> Bisa aja Prof. <laughs> untuk, un, untuk bagi tebal tesis, Prof. <laughs> <laughs> jadi, ada orang pandai goreng jadi dia boleh tulis banyak di tempat <laughs> <coughs> tapi semua orang dia tak pandai jadi dia tak tak cukup lah tak cukup pages lah. tak cukup maklumat <laughs> bagi yang tak pandai goreng dia kena buat macam explanation uh, kalau explanation dia ada correlation dia ada causality uh, for example Mr Songko is doing the explanation Uh, the the factors that determine the adoption or the, the intention to adopt eh? the factors yeah. that determine the intention to adopt takaful in the future yes. so this is cause and effect the intention to adopt takaful and then what are the factors so there are many factors for example six or seven factors so kalau ada banyak factors Uh, nak goreng pun banyak lah kan. Jadi hmm. dipandang lah. So that's why for PhD, if you do uh, quantitative, I always recommend do the causal study where you explain the factors which influence a certain uh, phenomena. The independent variables that influence the dependent variables. If you do the uh, quantitative studies but if you do qualitative uh, then uh, for example you explain a certain phenomena and then uh, based on the observation then you need to explain a lot yeah why it happens uh, what are the factors that happens so it can be from from interview you you can ask uh, experts yeah Uh, for example, you, you want to find out uh, what uh, motivates uh, uh, the group 40, people from group 40 to uh, to use or what, to accept uh, Arahnu, eh? to go for Arahnu. Then uh, you can do qualitative study, uh, explain uh, you know ask as the experts or ask some people so that is called the explanation you want to know why something happens or if you want to do quantitative you can develop the questionnaire uh, and then um, distribute the questionnaire and then analyze using a certain statistical package like mr Uh, like Bapa Adi is trying to do, eh? and also Bapa Songko is trying yeah. to, you try to develop a questionnaire and then distribute to the respondents, get back the questionnaire, input the data <laughs> into, for example, SPSS or into Excel, and then later on analyze the data. So Bapa Adi changed from qualitative to quantitative. <laughs> Because yeah. for for qualitative, you need uh, mesti pandai goreng ya yeah, for qualitative. Yeah, betul. <laughs> Saya juga tak pandai ya. <laughs> kalau kalau kuanti tak perlu pandai goreng sebab dia dah ada step untuk kuanti mula buat ini buat ini, and then dapat result and then explain. Uh, there are two ways to explain. Nah, dia dah ada certain uh, step lah dia dah ada frame yeah. mula buat ni and then buat ni buat ni macam itulah um, yeah. maybe that's why Papa yeah. Adi tukar eh? <laughs> yeah, tukar Tom saya kan pusing <laughs> susah jadi tukar saja yeah. nanti uh, Cik Safudin mungkin boleh fikirkan sama ada nak buat kuali ataupun uh, kuanti oh. Kalau kalau kuali tu setengah orang pandai goreng macam penceramah ha? dapat <laughs> dapat satu ayat Quran je dia goreng pada <laughs> goreng dapat dua jam goreng kan <laughs> kalau saya bagi satu ayat Quran uh, saya cuma boleh goreng lima minit saja lepas tu habis <laughs> itu uh, so depends ha? uh, setengah orang pandai 
Macam ahli politik dia cakap satu benda aja tapi nanti dia goreng sana. Dia boleh cakap, betul. Dia boleh cakap apa ni lama eh dua jam tapi sebabnya. Saya kan background engineer ya, bukan bukan marketing. Jadi <laughs> saya enggak bisa goreng. Saya, saya juga uh, daripada kecil seorang yang sangat pendiam. Ah. Uh. Kecil dahulu, believe it or not, uh, yeah. saya sangat pendiam. Uh, I didn't say much. Yeah. Uh, jadi bila sudah dewasa pun, uh, tidak cakap banyak, uh, kecuali <laughs> dalam kelas. Uh, kalau dalam yeah. kelas, terpaksa bercakap kan. <laughs> Tapi kalau di kedai kopi, orang yang paling sikit bercakap. Uh, banyak jadi, minum kopi berarti. Banyak minum kopi. Ya. Eh. <laughs> so that's why uh, my research has been uh, quantitative sebab tak pandai goreng ya. jadi kita analyze data explain the data and then justify kenapa finding situ uh, kenapa finding situ macam itu yeah. explain why the the evidence support hypothesis or explain why the evidence uh, does not support the hypothesis. Okay, so this is uh, explanatory uh, research. <clears throat> so explanatory research is useful when we want to explain why things are the way they are with respect to phenomenon under investigation. We want to explain why, for example, the uh the the collection of income zakat has been increasing so we want to explain why or what are the factors so yeah. that is the explanation and the higher the higher one is community change or action this one we do not do uh, at phd level uh some uh, some uh, lecturers have this kind of uh, research Uh, this kind of research basically involves uh, the academicians together with the industries and or the communities uh, or the community members. They do a research uh, for the purpose of uh, solving a certain uh, uh, issues in the community. For example, the issues of absent school absenteeism. Ramai yeah? tidak datang ke sekolah. Okay, then we need to do a community change or action research. So the, <coughs> the 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 school teachers together with the community members, maybe the parents association need to sit down and uh, do a research to to explain how to ink how to you know decrease the absenteeism from school for example yeah? but for phd we don't we we usually we don't do this type of research okay so peer research and uh, applied research like we mentioned peer research is usually used to de to develop new knowledge yeah that advances our understanding of the real world so we want to develop new no knowledge we want to study what has not been studied before. And applied research is conducted when a decision must be made about a specific real life problem. Yeah, it must be a specific uh, real life problem. Uh, peer research it evaluates concepts and theories. In peer research, we, we, we try to eval evaluate uh, the, the findings and the methodology that have been used And then we want to uh, expand the knowledge. We want to find something new, new discovery uh, about the theory or some people new discovery about the uh, methodology. It may also help in rejecting or supporting existing theories. So we, we look at the existing theories and our data can either support or reject the existing theories. 
And uh, in applied research, the principal motive uh, conducting applied research is to improve human conditions. Okay, for example, in 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 medicine, yeah? for example, we have the problem of uh, HIV, the problem of COVID, mm -hmm. yeah, where there are no medical cure, and you know the the they, they do the study to find uh, the cure for HIV, to find the cure for influenza, to find the cure for COVID nineteen. So this. This is the the type of research, you know, you know, to find solutions to the real world problem, and the results can have commercial value. Yeah, the results can have commercial value. So, if, for example, they do research on new cure for for COVID nineteen, so the results, uh, you know, can have commercial value. So, if they patent the product. Yeah, they they can make lots of money. Okay, so pure research usually have no commercial value. Applied research can have commercial value. Prof, Prof. Yes, go ahead. Kalau kalau uh, kalau macam saya ada WhatsApp kepada Prof tu, ada contoh satu tajuk yang saya terfikir lah untuk ya. Uh, faktor ketersediaan adaptasi model perniagaan arah nu atau perniagaan Islam Malaysia untuk dipasarkan ke pasaran kewangan Indonesia yang saya lihat ni is a more towards kepada applied research ya, uh, bro. Betul betul. Yeah. Betul. It's, hmm. it's, uh, it can it can be both. Uh, can be both. Okay. Be both. and applied research. Okay. Uh, it, it looks like it is a quantitative research. Mm, so I think uh, it's good, it's good. Cuma nanti kalau kalau nak buat uh, quantitative research, uh, the the population or the respondents, uh, mungkin dari Indonesia lah. Eh? Yep. Mm. Yeah. A good topic, good topic. Very clear, very clear topic. It's yeah. good. Nanti boleh buat uh, initial plan, uh, tulis background of the study, latar belakang kajian, tulis sedikit problem statement. <coughs> Mungkin problem statement boleh start dengan applied research punya style lah. Cari okay. apa dia real world issue, isu yang sebenarnya apa dia. Uh, nak, nak meningkatkan apa ni, uh, nak meluaskan pasaran, kan apa. Uh, kemudian uh, tulis a few research Uh, questions, apakah persoalan yang ingin dikaji? Contohnya, uh, research question yang pertama. Uh, uh, kita cari. Uh, government. Uh, nanti nanti carilah. Uh, uh, yeah. Adakah adakah polisi kerajaan hmm. mempengaruhi keterjaan <laughs> operasi model perniagaan? Uh, adakah Sikap contohnya, sikap pengguna di Indonesia uh, akan mempengaruhi ketersediaan. Uh, nanti kita carilah. Uh, sekarang ni tulis dahulu. Uh, then, then kita boleh uh, make adjustment later. Okay. Thank you, Prof. Welcome. Very good. Lepas tulis research questions, tulis research objectives. Lepas tu, scope of the study. Sebab scope of the study is very important. Kita tak boleh kaji semua benda. So, kita cuba scope kan. For example, population tu siapa dia. Kalau nak tanya apa ni, population dia adalah Muslims in Indonesia, jenuh lah. Ada more than six, uh, uh, more than six oh, yeah. million. Huh? Yeah. Teruk lah sebenarnya. <laughs> more than six million, uh, more than how many millions? Of now, now is 277 totally. 277 so, population. So, so, okay, so, okay. 70 so, 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 so,
jangan kita pilih responden yang banyak eh. hmm. kita boleh scope rezeki tempat eh, nak nak fokus di betul di bandar besar contohnya di di Jakarta or, or in uh, east uh, east Java or west Java jangan jangan ambil Indonesia keseluruhan <laughs> like uh, <laughs> ah, ya betul 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 setuju setuju prof sebab attention attention kami adalah di Uh, ada dua tempat yang kita cuba fokuskan di Pekanbaru and Aceh. Hmm, jadi tulis di situ. Ya. Yeah. So, the study includes uh, respondents uh, from uh, Bandar Baru and Aceh. Uh, Pekanbaru, eh? Pekanbaru. Yeah. Pekanbaru and Aceh ya. Eh? Ya. Yeah. Okay. Uh, as I always advise my students to look at previous PhD thesis uh, kalau ada yang berkaitan dengan uh, tajuk. Contohnya tajuk sini adalah berkaitan dengan uh, ad uh, adaptation ataupun adoption. Uh, mungkin <coughs> mungkin cari tajuk adaptation ataupun adoption. Itu yang yang digunakan pakai lah. Adoption of tak semestinya arah nu uh, boleh cari dalam konteks berbeza mungkin adoption of uh, takaful mungkin adoption of islamic banking uh, mungkin adoption of wakaf uh, sebagai asas sebab uh, tajuknya adalah adoption yeah. cuma dalam konteks berbeza is okay for the purpose of research mm konteks berbeza boleh digunakan sebagai rujukan. Contohnya dalam area Islamic banking, area zakat, wakaf, takaful boleh juga digunakan. Kalau boleh dapat thesis yang lepas lagi bagus. Maybe boleh tanya Mr uh, uh, apa ni bapa Adi ataupun Mr Songko kalau mereka ada contoh uh, kajian thesis yang lepas. Baik, baik, bro. Thank you. So, Mr. Songko also is doing on adoption of takaful. Maybe Encik Safudin adoption of mm, Ar-Rahnu. Eh? So, just different context. Uh, Bapa Adi is on uh, adoption juga, kan? Kan. Yeah. Saya ganti sama compliance behavior on halal. Oh, compliance behavior. Hmm. Ikut Prof. Yusuf lah. Okay, yang tu TPB lah eh? Ya, yeah, betul. TPB. Hmm. So, Karena kan halal itu kan mandatory. Eh? Iya, betul. betul. It's an obligation. Yes. No so, choice. Uh, ini petua lah. Eh? Ya, petua yeah. yang yang tak yang tak ditulis di mana-mana buku eh. untuk cepat habis PhD kita refer to PhD thesis yang lalu. Ya. Yeah. <laughs> Jadi nanti dia akan memberi it, it gives us an idea about how to write all the chapters. Uh, we do not yeah. we do not uh, follow exactly, we do not copy paste, but at least uh, we are able to see how others have done and then we decide Uh, yeah. the, we want to where we can make a certain uh, adjustment, alright. So for right. example, for example, if you want to enter a huge forest, masuk dalam hutan, eh, hmm. you might ask other people who have entered the forest, so that you will know uh, which way to go, right? Yeah. Yes. So you will not get lost. If you go into a big jungle without asking anybody, you just go and it's more likely you will get lost in the jungle. <laughs> Mr. <Pasti>. Songko, <laughs> yeah, Mr. Songko, don't go into jungle without yes. asking uh, the people who have been there. <laughs> uh, so that's why I always recommend you know, look at a few PhD theses on the topics the topic can be in different contexts yeah uh, 
So it doesn't matter in the context of Aranu, Takaful, Islamic banking, Zakat, Wakaf, and, and some related issues. Yeah? Okay. So I think, okay, we will stop here and we will continue with the uh, approaches to research. There are several approaches. One is quantitative research. Number two, qualitative research. Number three, mixed method research. Number four, art-based research. Number five, community-based participatory research. But uh, we will discuss only three. One, quantitative, two, qualitative, and three, mixed method research. Number four and number five, uh, we will not discuss in detail. So inshallah, we will continue. Uh, same time, inshallah, next week. Inshallah. 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 Uh, 10 o'clock, inshallah. So I will post this video in, I will give the link for this video in our Telegram. The reason I use Telegram is because mm -hmm. last semester or previous semesters, we use WhatsApp group to communicate. Yeah. After a while, some of the doc documents in the WhatsApp group have to be deleted because the 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 handphone is always full. It says the storage is almost full, so we have to delete. So when we use Telegram, uh, it doesn't uh, it doesn't matter. We don't have to delete. So. Mm. Sometimes in the semester, in the previous semesters, student asked me, Prof, can you uh, post again the teaching plan? Can you send again the, the textbook? Say, oh, how many times I can send? Okay. Itu, dah, itu dah terbalik, Prof. Student ask professor. <laughs> yeah, that's what happened. Yeah, student asked me. <laughs> to send again this thing and that thing. Yeah. The student PhD UNICEF ni agak manja. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> they are very pampered. And, and I always entertain them. I think that's why they are pampered. <laughs> so, selalu manja kan ni pun. Nak, nak bagi. Kita, dia, dia minta apa kita bagi. <laughs> Jadi pampered lah. Macam anak kita juga. Ha, betul. Abah, abah nak duit anak bagi. Kita <laughs> beri tempat ya. Eh? We give everything. Ah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And some of them ask me questions like, the problem. How can I um, re renew the the what do you call the visa? I said, Masha Allah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Visa renewal. Can you please call this number. So they are very pampered. They ask all kinds of questions. <laughs> Sometimes, uh, you know, the questions that I don't really know about. But it's okay. You can ask any questions. If I don't know, I will refer you to uh, another person. Eh? Yeah, definitely. Okay, uh, thank you very much. It's been uh, useful for the first session and I apologize for uh, disruptions uh, because when I stay in this uh, office there are many uh, in interruptions so I apologize for that and uh, today I've learned uh, new things also so Alhamdulillah so may Allah give us the Amin, Amin, Alhamdulillah Barakallah uh, it was born with a recitation of Tasbih Kafara uh, and uh, Surah Al As. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Okay, thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Wow. Thank you, bro. Thank you, bro. Thank you, bro. Thank, thank you, you. Thank you, Adi. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.